phase of this when you're designing a chest pawn. Um, you, you know, the first thing that I did was go to Google. I looked at a whole bunch of different chess pieces. Um, what you're looking for, just imagine that you have a straight line. This is your blank. And then imagine that your pen does not work when you're on camera. <laughs> oh, goodness. So, I kind of just decided, okay, I want a base. Hopefully the camera's picking this up. Zoom in just a little bit here. And then I decided I wanted to have a little bit of a step and basically draw out your profile and your design. So on mine I decided I wanted to come back and then curve. And then above and beyond the curve I kind of decided to do um, another come bump here. And then a curve in. Um, I ended up having a few different designs. So, this is my base. Obviously, that's the ball on the top. And when you're comparing that to what you've got on the lathe, you've got a blueprint for what you want to cut into. Um, you can see I've got the piece on here. I just did a video. Um, or this is going to be part of a video of design. And I just finished my video of actually cutting the finished product to, um, the design that I came up with. But you can see I had several different ideas um, from very elaborate to very simple and I ended up with going something that's kind of in between all of them. Um, but this was my first prototype and then I kind of evolved from there. So if you just imagine that comes over and then it's a mirror on the other side. Uh, that'll give you a real good idea of how to come up with a design. Just check out all the chess pieces that you like on Google. Google Images is a wonderful thing. And then come up with a profile design. And if anybody wants to use my designs, you're more than welcome to. Um, again, I got my ideas off of Google Images. So uh, hopefully this is useful. When you're looking at this, you'll understand what I'm doing in the design phase video. And thank you for watching. Uh, enjoy the design process on the lathe that's coming up next. Just like anything else you're going to do, find the bevel, find the chip. Today I've got a nice knot free piece of pine. I'm um, starting off with four inch blanks. And let me get in here and make sure. Yeah, you can see my tool. Okay. So, yeah, we're starting with four inch blanks, uh, just regular old pine. Uh, this first thing is to get it turned around. Next, we're going to get it to circumference, and I am almost there. I think these are something, these are slightly oversized pieces, probably, so I'm in the neighborhood of about an inch and a quarter diameter is what I'm shooting for. darn close to that. Yep. Okay. So design number one, 
is going to call for um, probably a parting tool would be best. We've got to come up with the design. I don't even know how tall I want this to be yet. So let's start with, let's say I'm going to shave off that much. So that's my bottom. I generally like to have the depth of a parting tool for my base. enough for a line for me to see what I'm doing. So we're going to come in right here. I believe I wanted to do a V groove on that. section down. I'm just paring this off. So, that looks like a pretty good step up right there. So then we are going to have an actual step in here between where I'm going to shallow it and where the ball is going to be. And I'm going to start with a real fine paring tool next, parting tool. there. I don't want to go too deep. And then I've just got to come in here and we've got to pare this down um, to shallow it down in. really well now that I reshaped it, doesn't it? I'm going to switch over to my very fine spindle gouge. My detail spindle gouge. I always call this a flute just for some reason. What can I say? That sticks in my head. Here. Give ourselves 
myself a little step. I like steps. Steps are cool. And then I'm going to go back to this and we're going to beat this over. fine cut here. I just want to get this to do exactly what I want and that's it. That's about right. I kind of like that. And I'm going to clean this back up with my parting tool. My little step. I said for some reason I like those. I don't know why. That's an extra feature but And let's narrow this down and even it a little. I'm only turning 2200 RPMs today. I wanted something that was a little on the slow side. All right. So once again, I need to pare this down to the size of the ball. And I also want to step in here. So I'm going to come over to, say, here. I'm going to stop there. I think that's a good circumference for a ball, don't you? So the next question is, is how tall should the ball go? I think it ought to be eh, about right there. That looks good to me. So now we're going to start shaping this with the actual skew. I almost wish I had a piece of pipe handy for this. Believe it or not, you can make a really good ball with a pipe. A lot of people probably be surprised by that, but... Something the circumference of your shower spout. I believe that was something my high school teacher taught me. Amazing the things you learn. And I'm going to give myself some room here. Just in case I want to go a little further. I don't know what I want to do with this ball yet. That looks better, I think, don't you? We're going to shape it smaller, though. You can always take off more. Hey, that's a good shape for the king right there. I kind of like that for a design for my king. Or maybe a knight? I was going to do square knights castles, but I like that. Note to self, pawn turns into knight or bishop or king or something. Alright, let's cut into this a little more.
That's a narrow ball. I kind of like that. Don't you? Now let's ball it some more and make it less oval. I like that. It's a good design. Let's even this a little. And I also need to do something with this. I don't know if the camera sees it, but I got a couple steps on this side that were unintentional, but I like them. I'm going to keep them. Give me my pairing tool for this. Maybe my small precision one. I kind of like having a step on that side. That's kind of cool. Let's see what that will do. I haven't even used this one yet. I can usually accomplish everything I want to do with the big set. Hey, that cuts nice. One of the few sets I've had right out of a box that actually cuts good. A little mini precision set. There, if I was to cut that right there, I would be a happy camper. I'll go to my small one just for fun. I always finish these off on the bandsaw anyway. Oh, I actually cut the bases off. There we go. Ooh, toasty. today. I have my long sleeves on and I'm the first one to tell you don't wear long sleeves around turning equipment. Shame on me. You caught me. So I don't know how long that took me. That's a design all on my own. I just looked at a bunch of other pieces and said I want to try that. And then I kind of came up with a profile based off of all of those. Anybody can do this. You can design your own stuff. It's not complicated, it's not difficult, anybody can do this. Literally, anybody. Make sure I keep the contour of the ball going here. And let's get in, throw a little on those lips, those little steps as I like to call them. the 
access to machine maintenance in the world. I could do a lot better sometimes. You should take care of your tools. I love the grain in these. Pine is a very underutilized wood. It's cheap, it's readily available, and it does a fantastic job. And I think if I did that right, I even left myself room to drill a hole on the bottom for weights. My next one, I might make a slightly fatter base. It's all part of experimentation and seeing just what you want to do with your design. Hope you've enjoyed this chest turning, just a demonstration. Um, I don't know what my final pieces are going to look like. I'm going to try a couple more profiles.